Welcome everyone. Welcome to this astrology video on the full moon in Capricorn. And I have a few things I need to get out of the way first. Please indulge me if you will. Um, I am sorry that I did not get out the astro forecast for the last new moon in Gemini. I will speak a little bit on that um, before we get into the full moon in Capricorn. And I'm going to try to make this video a little bit more brief as well. Um, because honestly, my energy has been pulled in different directions with putting out the war on women. I hope you caught it and the war on men. A lot of research and I'm also feeling very led to do a video on the war on families during cancer and or leo season we'll see how it goes um it's pulling my energy away from these monthly astro readings which i enjoy doing but i am feeling very spirit led to to speak on these other issues um at this time and right now my north node is in the 12th house so <laughs> i mean i just got to follow spirit and um and it's kind of a little bit hard on me because there's a part of me that wants to be consistent with these astro uh, videos but then there's another part of me is like yeah I, i'm getting pulled over here for this time being and i think yeah once i finish the war on families video i'll get back on track um with being more consistent with these astro videos but for the time being uh, my apologies on not getting one out for the last new moon and also this video is going to be a little bit more condensed and not as long-winded hopefully that's a positive i don't know we'll see <laughs> let me know in the comments below you know how y'all feel about that um, and also I gotta say something else. I was like so wanting to just get that new moon in uh, Gemini readings, all those readings done for the signs. I was so like wanting to get it done that um, I realized after all the videos were released, um, I screwed up on the houses. Oh my gosh. Except I know they got the Gemini reading and the Sagittarius reading correct. But I got the other ones like backwards in reverse order. My bad. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I wasn't. Um, we will blame it on, you know, Neptune squaring Gemini. Yeah. Okay. Um, going on during that time. Yeah. So I felt really bad about it. And the old me would have just been like, oh my gosh, scrap it all. Take them down. Start over. But then this other part of me was like, move on. <laughs> just go just move on with it you know and oddly like Sagittarius was correct but it was my least viewed video so and I had other people saying that it resonated so you know sometimes just let go let God trust spirit was there in the cards um but just as a matter of integrity I feel bad like oh I fumbled and um I just double checked this time around when I was doing the full moon and Capricorn readings and um by the way I am noticing some themes when I sit down and do these readings, right? Okay, let me share with you very briefly that during the readings for the new moon in Gemini, um, I kept getting a lot of uh, signs showing up um, with the tower card in the position of what is hidden, what they are not seeing clearly, okay? Um, either it was a tower card in the upright or tower card in reverse, and I really take it to mean that collectively a lot of people right now are not seeing that there is something unsustainable about what they're doing or their direction or their course of action they're either not seeing that this is not sustainable or they're not seeing that there are integrity issues they're not getting the whole truth about the matter there's they don't have all the information um and so I was seeing that during the new moon in Gemini readings. Now what I'm seeing with the full moon and Capricorn readings, a lot of cards coming up showing that people are feeling like frustrated, okay? And that um, they are bored or not putting in the work or frustrated because other people aren't putting in the work or they're putting in the work and they're not being rewarded. And... Um, Honestly, the stuck energy could be blamed on retrogrades, but I am getting a lot of people feeling blocked and frustrated about it. And I feel it kind of goes back to that new moon in Gemini, consistent collective energy of something is not sustainable. So if you are right now uh, coming into this full moon in Capricorn, feeling like, why can't I move this forward? What is the problem here? Um, you maybe need to wind it back and be like, well, I mean, was this ever sustainable in the first place? 
did I ever get the whole truth and nothing but the truth on this matter? I mean, like, you need to be brutally honest with yourself. Are you, like, barking up the wrong tree? Okay, I mean, I hate to say it like that, but I feel like with this full moon in Capricorn, it is going to bring this issue up again with integrity and asking us, really giving us the opportunity to pursue more integrity and more wholeness and more endurance in our relationships and looking at how we improve security issues. And I saw some weird stuff going on, by the way, in these readings where you have some people, they're doing great. Things are stable and things are secure for them. But the way they're going about getting the stability and security is by making other people unstable and un not secure. And that needs to be addressed. And then you have other people who they don't feel stable and secure because they're in relational dynamics where, for what I just said, right, it's the flip side of the coin where we have got to maybe figure out, I can't win with this person. They're not going to get me where I want to go because... They don't have the tools in the shed. Um, they don't share values, whatever. I feel like I've been saying this a lot, but it's almost like a magnifying lens is really getting put um, on this issue of, hey, like you're being forced to really look at the sober facts of, is this sustainable? Can this go the distance? Is this whole? Um, can it endure the trials of life? You know, the testing and the trials of life. And I think that one of the challenges of this energy is letting go of the need to control the situation, right? And I saw that in the readings as well, like trying to fix people like, here, if only you would see my point of view or do it the way I say, then everything would be okay. Actually not, because then that person might be out of alignment with themselves and their own values. And so, you know, we're kind of having to kind of hands off some things and uh, let it go and say, okay, so, you know, maybe we're, we can't come together. We're never going to come together on this because it would put you out of integrity to do it. And for me to get on board with you would put myself out of integrity. And this is really hard stuff to face. We're just looking at the brass tacks of it in Capricorn, you know. Um, but I think also for some people, the reason why there are misalignments in these relationships is because of, yes, integrity issues. People being dishonest, not being honest with themselves and others. And that could be a challenge during this time of how do you overcome that? How do you deal with the character issues that are coming up in relationships? Maybe you're dealing with somebody who doesn't have the security within themselves to give you security. Maybe they like their illusions. They love living in the lie and you want to get out of it. But, oh, wait a minute, you can't fix them and they don't want to be fixed, you know? So that's a challenge, I think, of this energy. So keep in mind that this full moon is in a cardinal sign and it has a lot to do with taking action. However, with this being a full moon and ending a culmination, the action being taken is releasing, shedding, letting go of something so that maybe, yeah, maybe you can also take action elsewhere with a new beginning. And that new beginning would have to do with bringing more stability and securing something for your future. But again, if something's in the way of you doing that, you got to let it go to help stabilize yourself, right? You're like, let's say you're trying to make something work in an unworkable relational dynamic. Well, you're going to have to shift gears and let go of that person or that opportunity, painful as it might be, so that you can align with someone or something that is honestly in alignment with you. With this being in a cardinal sign, obviously cardinal signs are going to be most impacted. Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, right? These are the signs that get stuff started, right? Aries starts spring. Um, Cancer starts summer. Libra starts fall. And Capricorn starts the winter. So, yeah. Um, I think the main, one of the main themes here with this time frame is looking at what you can rely upon and what's reliable. Going back two weeks ago to that new moon in Gemini, let me say, you might have had to switch gears around that time. You might have had some plans that you set in place, but with that new moon squaring Neptune, you realize, uh oh, I got to switch something up. I got to change things because it's not, that's not what it seems, right? Just for an example, I had taken on a freelance contract and they started getting sideways with me and I started my spidey senses started saying oh my gosh they're getting free work out of me and they're not gonna pay me so I started saying okay well 
that's fine. I'll take on additional work, but um, you're gonna have to put up an advance. You're gonna have to put up security towards the completed project. And I tried to negotiate with them and they were very non-negotiable and they're like, no, nope, we're not paying till everything's complete the way we say. And I'm like, yeah. With Neptune, there was some deception and that's why we covered that in the last tarot reading. It's like, where's the blind spot? Where's the deception? And so for me, I was like, hmm, okay, um, that was a trial run. And it's not that I'm not gonna do any more freelance work as a writer, but I'm going to change the way that I do it to put more preventative measures to ensure that my time is not wasted again by people who probably don't want to pay, which by the way is super typical with freelance work. Oh, if you want to help me not get for, have to do my freelance work, sign up for a private reading. That helps. <laughs> Otherwise, I just, I by and large do this um, as a free service for humanity because I'm an Aquarian. This is what I feel spirit led to do. This is my life purpose destiny, but this matrix doesn't like to pay me for it except for my really good clients. But yeah, um, that my repeat clients that come back to me. Um, but yeah, I would prefer to just work for y'all. But unfortunately, um, you know, Saturn in my 10th house has not been very kind. Anyway, moving on past the illusion, the delusions of that's, you know, full moon and Gemini squaring Neptune. Um, hopefully whatever you realized was not being seen clearly or not being done with integrity. Um, maybe where somebody was being deceptive, not only up and up with you, hopefully by now you've gotten the memo, you've course corrected, <laughs> and you are shifting more towards doing something that is reliable, is secure. But you gotta ask yourself, especially during the time of this full moon, what can you rely upon? There could be timing issues at play, um, maturity levels at play, right? Having to realize that some people mean well, but they, they have some growing up to do and they're not ready to run with the big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Um, there might also be karmic debts that come up at this time that are relevant where again, it's like, yeah, they want to put in on this, but they're going to have to go face some other obligations or responsibilities or commitments. They're already overextended, overcommitted. So they want to help you and they want to join forces with you and they want to secure things and stabilize. But Again, are they your person or is this your opportunity? Um, you will have to keep these things in mind of timing issues, maturity levels, karmic debts, um, outstanding obligations and commitments. And also with this energy, I'm just gonna be straight with you, not a fan of Moon and Capricorn because I remember going through it last year, by the way, it was like, my gosh, when did we go through this? You think back, okay, think back to the last full moon in Capricorn, which was July 13th of last year, 2022. I felt so emotionally constipated during that time. I had to go out in nature. I had to go, I had to get out. I had to go out and, and swim and get in the water and get around some trees and get some fresh air because it was just a very, very stifling feeling and so just be aware of that if you are feeling very stifled or reserved or you know held back emotionally during this time uh it's an en energy this too shall pass um i think some feelings that may come up um for a lot of people you know apart from what i saw in the cards with the frustration and feeling blocked and stuck and you know things like that um is maybe feeling like I need to do the right thing. What is the right thing for me to do? And uh, one thing we, I've tried to bring up in the readings is honoring your feelings. Cause I think that sometimes Capricorn energy just keeps plodding along and doing what needs to be done and being responsible. But the emotions of the situation get kind of backburnered or put in a backdrop where it, it's almost like you tune it out. Um, or it's very at a surface level, like not wanting to get to the depths of the emotion. And so, um, again, maybe because of the energy, you can't really go deep in it or you, it's hard to go deep in it for some of you. Um, but at the same time, don't lose sight of your feelings. Really uh, acknowledge and tune into those feelings. And that's something I tried to bring up during the readings to help you guys figure out perhaps what emotions need to be tuned in into during this time so that yeah you do the right thing but you don't dishonor how you feel that's integrity right that's wholeness 
this new, sorry, this full moon is going to oppose the sun in Cancer. So I do feel like it's bringing about a time when a lot of people are looking at security issues, particularly, you know, material versus emotional issues. Um, that's really getting highlighted and this contrast between at what point do I nurture things and at what point do I get a stiff upper lip and <laughs> be disciplined, you know, it's this mother-father dichotomy. Um, and it's also about, you know, balancing your private life with your public life, having a work-life balance and so that's maybe a good question to ask yourself during this time. Where do you need to balance those things out? I mean, for me personally, I kind of like today I'm in a workaholic mode where I've been just hammering all day and I don't want to stop. I'm like the Energizer Bunny, you know, with my Mars and Capricorn. <laughs> but, um, but Spirit with that North Node in the 12th house has been like, <laughs> yeah, Wednesday is your day off. And that's my day when I go out in nature and... I just totally decompress and I reset my energy out in nature. So, you know, it's not to be religious or anything or to tell you that you thou shalt this or that, okay, or to be really like legalistic, but, you know, a lot of religions do have a day of rest. You know, for the Christians, it's, it's Sunday. For the Jews, it's Saturday, Sabbath, you know, um, and... I'm not going to prescribe that you said any particular day, but I think it would be a good general spiritual practice. And I feel like Spirit's been showing that to me that I need to have like one full day where I rest, I recharge, and it's okay to be, quote, lazy, what the world would call lazy. It's okay to do nothing, right? How do you bring this balance back into your life if it gets too much of one thing and not another, okay? Not enough of another, I should say, yeah. I think this is also an energy that is helpful for us clarifying what our emotional needs are versus our material needs and setting up appropriate boundaries to get those needs met. Uh, not an easy thing because sometimes it's, it's at odds. Like maybe today I don't feel like going to work, but if I don't go to work, I can't pay my bills and then I'm going to really feel bad. <laughs> you know, like, we, you know, and the Aquarian thing is we're going to compartmentalize her. So I want to go to work. So I don't have something else to be depressed about if I don't go to work and I can't pay my bills. Right. Um, so I'm going to go to work and then I'll just, I'll be down and depressed when I come home. Not, you know, I'm not really, I'm not saying that that's going on. I'm just saying that would be an Aquarian mentality that we'll, we'll deal with that at a better time, you know, to deal with it. Um, but also, you know, taking a sober look at what is, what is actually supporting you right now. And I say that's a sober look or a sober reality because it might not be what you want to see, right? It's one of these things where it's not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Like, oh, you really want to join forces with this person or this company or this whatever, fill in the blank, but it's not going to get you to where you want to go. So are you willing to remain stuck? Are you willing to not be stable and secure because it's not gonna get you to where you wanna go? That's been a hard pill, by the way, for me to swallow. Really hard pill for me to swallow. Yeah, it reminds me of a childhood memory. Um, I had, I guess I got a picture from my childhood when I was like three years old. I was trying to um, get on one of these I want to call it like a statue, but it's kind of like a concrete, little concrete lawn art thing. And it was a little donkey carrying a, um, a wagon. And I was three years old and I got on there to, you know, hitch a ride and uh, three years old, not understanding it's made out of concrete. It's, it's not going to move. <laughs> and I kept trying to get, get the donkey to go. And uh, I started getting frustrated and crying. And of course, the adults thought this was so funny. They got a kick out of it and they took a picture, right? Gen X. Yeah. Welcome to the emotional empathy of the um, the parents and grandparents of Generation X. They're going to laugh at you when you cry. But that's what they did. They took a picture. They thought it was funny that I thought that I could go somewhere with this little concrete donkey that I was trying to ride off into wherever. <laughs> and I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm bringing this up because some of you may be kind of like that. And that, that childlike way of you're trying to get something to go that it... it, it, it it never can, it never will. 
and you're so committed to, but I, I want to, I want this thing to work and it's, it's not gonna work and you have to regroup, you have to figure out, okay, you know, you've got to accept, this is not gonna get me where I want, I want to go, I'm gonna have to get off of this and get onto something else, like my two feet, oh wow, North Node in the, in Taurus. Okay, but fortunately Jupiter's in Taurus right now, so hey, you got some blessing with your two feet, right? Yeah, on your rightful path, not other people's, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, just try to stay encouraged, even though I know it's frustrating. And I think that we're having to find some things out that mm, not, again, not what we wanted to hear, but what we need to hear. Um, with this full moon also opposing Mercury and Cancer, people are very much thinking about this whole issue of um, emotional security and how do I nurture these issues in my life. Um, but again, because it's an opposition, there could be some kind of information that comes in. Um, or you just start thinking and realizing something uh, that, oh wow, this is, again, this is not stable. This is not going to support me. There's a lack of support issue, a lack of stability, a lack of longevity, a lack of integrity. Um, yes, maybe some new information helps bring the wholeness of truth into clear understanding of, oh yeah, that is not gonna get me there. And that's why, now I can put my finger on it and this is why. And so, yeah, I think that might bring some revelation as to what's ending. And some of you might already know coming into it and it's just more confirmation. Um, that let's say you know that something is ending or expiring like a lease, you know that, that, that something is coming to culmination and with that energy you get affirmation like, yep, <laughs> We're closing this out. And so um, with Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, uh, which we really want to pay attention to uh, with Capricorn being affected by this full moon, we want to look at the ruler Saturn. But Saturn is retrograde right now in Pisces during this time. And so collectively, we're all going through this restructuring in terms of how we are going about getting the support that we need. I know it sounds like I'm like repeating myself, but it's layer upon layer where not only is there restructuring, but maybe you're having to readjust boundaries. You're having to maybe reset boundaries. And again, also reassessing uh, what you're gonna put your faith into. Because with, with Saturn and Pisces, we're all being taken to task. It's like, well, you wanna believe in this pie in the sky stuff, right? Like that a little concrete donkey is gonna go, you know, carry you off into, I don't know, never, never land. Three-year-old thinking. <laughs> but um, the reality check with Saturn there is, ah, it doesn't move and it, it, never, it never will. It wasn't built to, that's not the purpose. I'm getting a download right now as I'm, I'm talking about this, some of you, there has been a reluctance to address purpose in your life and the lives of others. And that's why there's some misalignments going on, right? Going back to that donkey. The purpose of that little donkey, I don't know why I'm on that. I had, this is totally spirit led because this is not in my notes. <laughs> the purpose of that donkey was never for mobility. It was for yard art, decor, okay? And when I got on there as a little three-year-old, it fit me perfect. It felt right. It looked cute. Looked like we were gonna be best friends. But I didn't understand its purpose was not in alignment with mine. My purpose was to move forward. Its purpose was to stay put, <laughs> okay? So there's something going on here with this during this time where you have got to reassess what you're putting your faith into and uh, dealing with maybe some sober reality checks against wishful thinking that's not really grounded. Yeah. Also, Saturn retrograde in Pisces is sextile. Uh, this full moon in, in Capricorn and Saturn is trying the sun in Cancer. So hopefully during this time, um, yes, even though there's some sober reality checks, you are coming out of it with a more viable plan or strategy uh, yes, it might cause you for a moment there to pull back and figure out um, how do I integrate the lesson, the deeper truths in order to get the growth in my life. And the sun is there giving support and vitality to nurturing this growth. So it's a super positive thing, even though, again, 
might cause you to just take a step back for a moment like mm, how do we like incorporate this reality check to get the growth but ultimately you do get it okay and with Jupiter and Taurus trining this full moon in Cancer, sextiling the Sun and Mercury in Cancer, that energy from Jupiter is going to, in the most you know, positive way of looking at this, uh, it will soften the sternness of Capricorn. Um, it, you know, on the downside, obviously it can really like put a magnifying lens on stuff, so you have to be aware of that, but I think Again, we're talking about sextiles and trines, so that's a real nice, lovely energy where I think things will not be so harsh, okay? Um, or it'll help It'll help you to walk it off a little bit better. Capricorn's great about walking stuff off. I mean, Capricorn just pff, up that mountain, sees the mountain, climbs it, just walking it right off. It's a chess move. It's a chess game. It's strategy to them, right? Some of y'all are, you know, maybe losing at this game of life and it's it's not fun. <laughs> These chess moves are stressful, challenging, and, you know, right? But Capricorn energy just kind of like, eh, walk it off, walk it off. You know, it's it's just a game. It's a game. Who cares? Why are you stressing about it, right? I, I've seen Capricorns have this mentality. Um, I think also the energy will probably allow for more material opportunities and um, culminations that allow for more opportunities. So that's positive. If something comes to an end, it actually might way make way for a new beginning on the material front. And I like that, right? I mean, I'm personally right now looking at, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for an opportunity to come in. And I know that when that opportunity comes in, I can let go release an opportunity that I'm currently in, right? Had there's some overlap there and it's a nice, hopefully I'm God willing, it's gonna be a nice transition flow where I go from one thing to the next rather than this abrupt ending. And then you have an abrupt start and there's some lull in between, right? I'm hoping with the sextile and trine, it's a nice smooth transition and exchange from one ending to a new beginning. If you understand what I'm saying, I think you do. Um, and, I think also this energy is going to amplify what you're valuing and it's going to help you get clear with your direction, your sense of direction and what is giving you solutions to those ends um, and what is helping you to nurture those solutions. But again, the energy is, is pretty nice, um, I think helping to assist all of us in releasing what has been getting in the way of finding solutions. Right, I'm in my own way at three years old when I think this little concrete donkey is gonna take me somewhere. <laughs> so I got out of my own way. I finally figured it out. This thing ain't moving, honey. Get up off on your own two feet and move it forward. And so I, I think that's kind of more of the energy that uh, we're, we're going to be shifting into. Think back to um, December 23rd of last year, around Christmas of last year because that's when we had a new moon in, in Capricorn. So this is kind of like, now we're coming to the tail end of that cycle and think about what you initiated during that time that is possibly coming at a culmination now from that time frame. It's like six months ago, over the last six months, you sowed the seeds back in December of 23 and what is paying off now? Hopefully you're getting a really good payoff. You're seeing like, aha, uh -huh, I'm finally coming out of that six month cycle. And you are seeing this coming to fruition, to culmination where, you know, you started planting the seeds, taking the steps forward to get to where you find yourself at the time at this full moon in Capricorn, which is some new manifestation, some new opportunity that gives you more stability, more security, moves you in your rightful path forward because you're coming into alignment with what really supports you and letting go of what does not. I hope that helps you. I hope it's blessed you. Thanks for watching. And until next time, y'all take care.